for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to H.R. 620, the ADA Education and Reform Act. This misguided piece of legislation is being sold to my colleagues and the American public as a measure that will help people with disabilities, help businesses overcome come into compliance uh, with the Americans with Disabilities Act, and help reduce drive-by lawsuits in states that have gone beyond the ADA to allow for monetary awards. In actuality, H.R. 620 doesn't accomplish any of these objectives. What's worse, if passed, this ill-considered bill will not only decimate the protections that people with disabilities rely on, it will turn back the clock to more, to more segregated society. And it will unravel the core promise of the ADA that a disability, visible or otherwise, can never be grounds to justify or tolerate discrimination. Mr. Speaker, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm insulted, but more than anything, I'm disappointed. Further, neither Mr. Peters nor Mr. Poe ever even approached me to sit down and have a d discussion about this bill to try to find some kind to try to actually fix the problem if it is about drive-by lawsuits. Has the Congress really become so divorced from the human experience of the disability community that we're willing to sacrifice their rights because it's easier than targeting the root of the problem? Are people with disabilities, people like me, so easily disregarded? I'm here to say enough is enough. Mr. Speaker, whether someone is born with a disability, develops a disability, or becomes disabled due to an accident, or from having served in our armed forces, the fundamental truth is that it happened by chance, certainly not by choice. As the first quadriplegic elected to the United States Congress, I overcame many obstacles to sit beside you as a member of this chamber. But I would never have had the opportunities that I cherish today without the tireless efforts of those that came before me to fight for the right for people with disabilities. Now, Mr. Speaker, I was injured in 1980 at just 16 years of age, a full 10 years before the passage of the ADA. And I certainly remember what life was like before the ADA became law. I remember that I couldn't go inside a, a public building that didn't have a, a ramp, couldn't travel without accessible transportation, and was excluded from gatherings in restaurants and libraries, movie theaters, and sports venues that uh, couldn't accommodate a wheelchair. I struggled to wash my hands at a, at a sink, access a restroom, and enter a classroom. I even declined matriculation at my first choice college because the challenge of getting around the campus would have been too difficult, if not impossible. The ADA, Mr. Speaker, brought more than just the recognition that uh, disability rights are civil rights. It brought hope and opportunity to millions of people, and it brought dignity. Mr. Speaker, after all, having a disability should not limit opportunity, and it is with opportunity that people with disabilities can lead more active, productive and independent lives. The ADA was passed nearly 28 years ago, and instead of holding people accountable to correctly implement uh, the law, especially when free resources and technical information are readily available, H.R. 620 weakens federal protections under the ADA, protections that prohibit discrimination on the basis of a disability. The ADA d does not uh, allow people to sue for compensatory or punitive damage it damages only injunctive relief. Yet some states have gone beyond the federal law to permit monetary awards. H.R. 620 seeks to address the issue uh, by in including a notice and cure period. Well, the idea that places of public accommodation should receive a free pass for six months before correctly implementing a law that has been a part of our legal framework for nearly three decades creates an obvious disincentive for ADA compliance. People with disabilities, Mr. Speaker, still face immeasurable obstacles despite progress of our great nation since the passage of the ADA. This past year, the disability community has had to fight to preserve access to health care, the long-term services and supports that are a lifeline for so many under Medicaid, and the ability to maintain certain protections and, and, and credits under the, uh, under the tax code. 
Well, Mr. Speaker, they're tired, and I'm tired, of defending against efforts to weaken our rights. I urge my colleagues to see past the smoke and mirrors and irresponsible claims that H.R. 620 is anything but an appalling effort to strip away the civil rights of a protected class of Americans. Mr. Speaker, vote in support of H.R. 620 will be a message to people with disabilities that we are not worthy of inclusion, acceptance, or deserve the same civil rights protections as others. Mr. Speaker, as members of Congress, Americans with disabilities look upon us to defend their rights. Let us not, let us, let us not vote to eliminate them. Let us make them proud.